Welcome. This is the November 8th Jalen Zones call. So far, we have Dan L., Florian, Antrenig V., Chris M., Jan B., myself, Michael. Hopefully, others will trickle in. And Dan has been brave and given Jan's ZFS and Jail layout a try. And there is a link in the notes there. And he has posted his results, which uh, go ahead and explain the statement Dan, jail does not contain expected files upon reboot of host. Restarting jail obtains the desired results. Yeah, and what I'm doing is I'm using the FSTAB approach that you mentioned. Uh, yeah, that's lines 25 or so. And if I, re yep. if I start and restart the jail, mm -hmm. the expected files are found, but on reboot, they're not there. But if I restart the jail after the reboot, the files are there. And I'm not sure why. Um, um, I, that's I, an interesting question. I would have to basically see that in action to find out. Well, does the what F is happening? Does the uh, F what I'm, Let him finish. Hold on. Let Dan yeah. explain. It, it, it's just the F, F stab is the only weird thing that's in there. Um, and I'm wondering if I'm doing that wrong. Um, let me see. So, um, you can, let me see. I know this. So, uh, you have this mount invocation here, and it's a mount dash AV. So one question, what happens if you disable jails on start in rc.com so that it doesn't run and then uh, run it once a host has basically finished and you logged in via SSH and you start the jail the first time? So is it really needed to restart it or is it an ordering problem that something is not yet ready when the jails RC script uh, runs, like for example, some ZFS file system you want to mount is not yet imported. Mm -hmm. uh, that's what I would try. But yeah, it depends on your setup. But I don't see yeah. any syntax error except maybe, uh, no, you're, you, I'm not sure if with the copy and paste thing to this, how that happens with uh, the, the here doc stuff is it has to use tabs, not uh, spaces. It needs so the, tabs? F, F yes, tab needs here doc tabs. with indentation has to use basically, so the operator uh, smaller than, smaller than uh, minus yeah. uh, is how you, uh, basically the, the minus says that the here doc is indented and should be tr left trimmed. And it only okay. trims spaces. And you have to basically line up the uh, start of the here doc with top indentation with uh, the end of the with the EOF, but it doesn't really matter if it's the end of the, oh wait, if the EOF is present, no, that would also block the, cause it to fail again. But, Okay, here I have an idea. What if the first time it fails, because if it's not indented, you get a syntax error in your FS tab because the EOF would appear in the input. So the first time the mount command would mount the file systems because it's the last entry and then fail. And when you restart, the file systems are already mounted unless you unmount them. Right. They, that they would are. also uh, explain the behavior. And the other thing, no, you did it. No, that's fine. Because uh, this, this is double expanded first by jail.conf and then by binsh. So the EOF in single ticks is correct because you want the path variable from the jail.conf to be expanded by the jail command, not uh, the dollar path variables by the shell. Um, the, so that's the, uh, completely correct. Basis. The spaces on there are all screwed up. It's actually column aligned with F stuff. Yeah, but uh, did you preserve them as tabs or uh, did you expand they, them to spaces? They are definitely spaces. Then so change that. Well, change all spaces I... to tabs. 
either in that or you just uh, remove the minus and then put uh, the EOF uh, just left aligned in the line. Okay. So that there aren't any white spaces in front of it. That also okay. works. And then, then I don't need tabs, but I can. And you don't tabs. need tabs, and you can keep using spaces. But the the nice thing about using this minus uh, smaller smaller dash to start a here dog instead of just smaller smaller is that uh, you can keep the whole script properly indented if you use tabs to indent. Yes. And no, this is not changeable via IFS because it's, this happens during passing of the shell script, not during runtime of the shell script. So, so if I use less, you use uh, less than, yeah. So what you could so do is I'm gonna, basically uh, I'm gonna move, uh, remove any white space be, uh, in line 30. Yeah. And try again. Uh, well, what I'm going to do, though, what I'd rather do is leave the EOF where it is and change everything to tabs at the beginning of the line. Yeah, everything at the beginning of the line is now tabs. I prefer to do it like that because it allows me to keep proper indentation. Even if it requires having to watch which kind of white space you're using, but that's just one idea. Um, okay. So the ni nice thing you can do is run the if you basically disable at least this jail from starting at boot by, for example, listing okay. out the remaining jails in the jails list, yeah. assuming you're still on thirteen and not on fourteen. I'm on thirteen. That's and fine. So. Yeah. I'm using jail.conf on this host. Uh, I assumed as much. So what you can do is you uh, can uh, remove this. Basically, if you don't have the jail list already, just uh, list all other jails in it temporarily. Reboot, try again. And then uh, you get, uh, let's have a look. No, um, and then you can basically start this jail on the command line with jail dash v dash c and then the jail name. If it has its own jail.conf instead of using a global one, you have to give it that via dash f. Jail dash v dash c. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, if you have, if you use a jail.conf for this jail, which is not the default one, give that first. Uh, mm -hmm. dash v for the balls and dash c for create uh, okay. followed by the jail name and the nice okay. thing about that is that then you get basically another thing i would do is redirect standard error to standard out and pipe it all into t or less so that you can mm -hmm. scroll back and then look over what the jail command printed out because then it will tell you what it do does before it does it uh -huh. And if you have um, any non-trivial shell scripts in there, put a set uh, minus X in there so that you enable trace mode so that the uh, shell will just print to standard error a trace log of every command it executes. Okay. That gets a bit um, noisy, but it's the fastest way I know to debug this kind of nested scripting stuff. What I'll do is... I've made the white, uh, I've changed from spaces to tabs for the F stab uh, assignment. And mm -hmm. I'll just wait until this host is rebooted and see what happens. Yeah, uh, let me just um, recommend to put a comment on top of that. And mm -hmm. maybe if you don't have it already, put the file under version control. <laughs> it's so much nicer to have slash etc and user local etc under version control if some packet mm -hmm. upgrade dumps a reference example configuration somewhere where, and then it gets included or stuff like this. Uh, yeah, that can get really annoying uh, if you don't know the old state. And I found that just a local Git repository is easy if you are at least passingly familiar with Git to use. 
and gives you a nice commit log of what you did, even if you don't put good commit messages in there. Of course. Because it's just for yourself, but at least knowing that this changed at this date and this is the half sentence I could be bothered to write to myself. Okay, Jan. Welcome, Jamie. Yep. So uh, maybe okay. Jan and Dan, go ahead and exchange in chat. If Dan, yep. it's appropriate to share your screen later, we could probably do that and do maybe mm -hmm. dump that FS tab as it's generated because if we're missing the delimiter. Well, that could be your problem. No, the problem would be that because it isn't yeah. properly indented and so on, the EOF would be part of the output and then the here doc would go to the end of the uh, command line pass to the shell. Oh, fascinating. Okay. <laughs> and then basically it becomes part of the uh, here doc. So you would have the FS tab ending in the literal string EOF on the last line, which then will be, oh no, I'm missing required fields or something. Yeah. Good to know. Uh, uh, but the mount why, dash why a dash v for verbose will tell you about that to standard yeah. error if there's a syntax error. So if you can capture that, the problem is that the jlrc.conf, I think the invocation discards that unless you instruct it to write it to a file or something which can be done for jail.conf. You can assign it a file to capture the console output to, but- I'm just gonna revisit the host now and see what happens. Yeah, I don't know how easy it is for you to get a maintenance window uh, or how disruptive it is, let's say. I can get one. By the time I get it, it may be already rebooting. Welcome, Jamie. Do you have any topics for the group? Any news? No, just here to listen. Awesome. Uh, so Dan gave Jan's uh, fancy ZFS layout a try, and we are debugging various aspects of it, which sound FS tab related. There's a link if you're wanting to follow along. Um, has anyone mm -hmm. thought of other topics while uh, we consider having Jan explain his S6RC and I item potence concerns at the command line. And related, I came up with something called Frankenboot a year or so ago, which created a bunch of uh, data sets on the host and attempted to have a completely like read-only, yet a few config files host. And Jan, I'm curious if this jail approach could be used on an actual host prior to the arrival of packaged base because some of the, the goals are identical. You want to be able to update underneath the hood with a, a read-only clone, as I recall. <laughs> no, uh, the goals are not identical. Okay. That's why I understood your question. Uh, so uh, what I've done would work as well with FreeBSD update or make install world, install kernel, install distribution. Uh, sorry, distribution, not install distribution. Right. To just populate the file system of the jail. Uh, the downside of as the first prototype I did started using a release tarballs. And then when FreeBSD update in change root mode on the, re, on the tarball uh, extraction destination, and then basically change to mount point so that it made sure to never run uh, FreeBSD update on an untrusted, potentially modified file system. But the problem with FreeBSD update is that depending on which mirror you hit, it can be quite slow. Yep, uh, okay, so and my goal was to update the host with a ZFS send, pretty much like you're describing for jails, but would that work out in any way, shape, or form, or is that crazy talk? It would be, you could do it with, um, if you reroute the host. Okay. The problem is that what I'm doing works by um, basically replacing the mount point, which you can't do with your root file system while there's any user space because uh, the init process always has to run and it can't have files from an unmapped file system memory map to execute okay. code. Okay. 
Okay. Um, that's the technical explanation as far as I can understand. Can tell why uh, it's impossible to have the required init process without a mounted root file system, and why you can't unmount the root file system. Okay. But rebooting would work basically. You set the kn uh, uh, dfs dot root dot mount from I think. Uh, let me check that. That's okay. Well, cool. Yeah, I I, I can go down that rabbit hole. Uh, so what you would do? Uh... And being a host topic, it's technically off topic. Um, and I want to interject while you look that up. Uh, the FreeBSD Vendor Summit took place Thursday, Friday, and fantastic points were made. The video should be out next week. And there were just some really good long-term points on like choosing the right kernel a decade ago, right OS a decade ago, and sticking to it and being very grateful for those decisions. I see your comments in chat. Um, I'll... Paste it in there. Thank you for that. Data set and reboot dash r. Dash r. Cool. Uh, that those are two commands, not one. Yeah. I, uh, let me put a little separator. Let me call on the. Yep. Go. I got it. I got it. Boom. Did um, it. Yes. Okay. Other topics before we hear about Jan's item potence concerns at the FreeBSD command line. You have a green light, Jan. I, um, oh, go ahead, Chris. Yes, okay. Chris. All right. Um, I, uh, I recently, I think last week when you weren't here, I uh, briefly touched on this item already with Jan. I uh, told Jan that I have sort of done some work on making, let's say, thin jails usable with salt stack. I'm thinking about putting it on GitHub, but then again, I'm wondering whether it's in a usable and, I don't know, let's say state that is actually worthwhile to open up. I would like to get some feedback. I could show you the whole thing, I suppose, eventually. Not necessarily today, but um, whenever is a good time, basically. Do we have salt users on the call? Chris, I, I recently know. never reacted yeah. about whether or not you should do something, you should always do it. Yeah. I will second um, Dan on that. We never want to discourage you. And whenever you feel you're ready for a demo, we'd love to see your demo. Okay, then I'll prep something and I'll let you know when, when I have something. Cool. Other topics before we deep dive, Jan dive. <laughs> for that um, <laughs> and you know what i mean you know what i mean so this isn't going to be i hope at least as long as my discussions normally go but uh give so, us um, a taste of what you're after let her rip Jan. okay um let's say i need an e-pair for my vnet enabled j and i need it on a bridge so um, and I also assume that the bridge already exists. So the problem now is basically what happens if anything goes wrong along the way. So let's say I want to create the e-pair, which gives me just one half of an e-pair back, even if I created it by name plus index, which is unusual because normally the commands uh, do, like ifconfig don't give you an output when you already told them the desired interface name, but because the uh, E pair has a suffix A or B, now you uh, get output. But if you then try to rename that, that can fail. So you have to clean up here because of this peculiarity with E pair that it's always in pairs. Uh, you can't just rename the first half of it because then you don't know the name of the second half because you can't uh, then uh, derive it from the IF config output. If for other interfaces where you can create and rename them in a single um, invocation of ifconfig, if something goes wrong, like the name is already used, 
because you have two instances, let's say one by your control engine, the other one by DevD or something running at the same time, it can happen that you have a race condition. So now you have two interfaces which got cloned, let's say tab one and tab two or something. And only one of them can be named to your JLB hive guest name um, to um, be made available to this uh, jail beehive instance. Okay, so what happens? Uh, you have to clean up this mess because I have config will tell you, yeah, I've created tab two for you, but I couldn't rename it, so I failed. So it fails and it's only st output and standard output. It's the interface it has left for you to uh, create and there's no way to get it atomic uh, as a single operation from IF config, so you basically have to let the race condition happen and then detect that it happened and recover by destroying the uh, unwanted second or third or whatever interface says and uh, all of this. So I wrote this little wrapper to do this for me and it came out to 400 lines of shell or so with other type things I also put in. And yeah. That's the problem that these kinds of wrappers are required because the base system tools they do a lot, but they do it in an ad hoc grown over time fashion where when the tool was started, the automation friendliness wasn't the major goal. So or not even probably understood, I assume, for some of the tools because it is that long ago. Um and because of that, they are quite um, hostile to easy automation and you have to work around them. Because let's say I want to bring an interface up. I can just run IF config, name up. And if the interface is already up, that's fine. For create, it doesn't work like that because of, I can explain why it doesn't work, but that's not why it couldn't work like that, it's just that it's not as easy to do. So, um, and if IF config up fails, then I have to find out why it fails by parsing the output from standard error. So basically I have to combine standard out and standard error and then match the literal text, which is also not good because it is very fragile. Oh, uh, output values um, depends. So it basically no, it always exits with, stand, with exit code one. Okay, yeah. Uh, my question to Jan in chat was: If does IF config have like a whole nice rich set of output no, error messages? Almost everything and I guess is no, error everything's error one. Okay, exit you. one, and uh, that would be one way to do it to basically encode like already accomplished is exit code whatever something hundred. Um, does not exist is 101. You could do something like that. And but then it make it possible to dispatch on the exit yet, code. Right? Okay. Yeah. That would be easy to script against, even if it is not uh, very expressive. Hmm. Uh, yeah, we, basically the problem is that at least in standard bin SH, you can't really redirect standard out and standard error into different variables without going through fi temporary files, which is the next problem because then you have to avoid race conditions on that file, so yeah. And then you have to start a subshell with holding yep. a log file with log f. Yeah, yeah. Yep. And yeah, it becomes <laughs> ugly if you try to do locking, so I found out that it the least uh, burdensome way to do it and still get the required behavior that if the interface has already been cloned from the correct cloner, then that's okay. Uh, so that I can just say, I want a tab interface with this name. Mm -hmm. If it exists, I'm happy. And if it doesn't exist, attempt to create it. If you fail to attempt to create and rename it, find out that if it was a race condition, and if there's one now, we are also happy. Destroy the temporary tab interface. But yeah, um, to get all of this with logging to syslog and standard out or error and so on is a bit annoying to set up. But 
probably possible. Um, yeah. But it, I just noticed again that there's really a argument to be made for turning IF config into a library and the command just as the legacy interface to the library. And then a new command, which isn't burdened by backward compatibility with a human and tooling friendly uh, syntax. Of, mm. uh, well, we won't fix that overnight. I understand you no, have but, a helper for ePair. What else have you written helpers for? Uh, for creating non ePair interfaces as well. Is that something you've shared on a gist or otherwise? Not yet, because okay. uh, I've hacked on it until 3 a.m. Oh, do tell. Okay, well, we are ready when you are, but do um, fit in sleep as appropriate. Yeah. Um, so it's. Uh, let nope. me just show. If it's not ready, usage. don't share it, but we are curious. I'm curious. Okay, let me just show. Uh, because... Can I take the screen share for a second? Absolutely. So let me fill, hunt for the right window. I think that should be the window we. And to Dan's Which point, window never did I ever share? discourage it? initiatives. Oh, it's tiny. It's Goodness, yeah, we see. Okay, uh, let me uh, share. Let me uh, grab the share, the right window. Now it should only share a window, right? Yes, sir. I see twelve CPUs and sys control and something FreeBSD four. Yeah. Okay. Is that a reasonable font size for you? It's beautiful. Okay, so. Um, So this is the interface basically now. Uh, I didn't come up with a clever name, so it's just. So now I can say, let's say I want a tab and I want to name it tab VM1. And why doesn't that finish? Uh, I must have broken something. Let me check. Uh, set dash X. <laughs> uh, oh, won't let me type, but okay. Um, what? Oh, I know what happened. Okay. That's simple to fix. Just delete that FIFO. For now, at least. Okay. Okay. So now it tells me that. I've destroyed the interface. And if I do it again, it tells me that it has cloned a new top interface and renamed it. And if I go, let's say, if config top destroy manually, that's fine. And if I now um, just piss it off, let's say, I block the name with another interface type. It clones a new interface, finds out that it can't, and this is basically the only way to find out what happened, capture the standard error, and then basically match against that. I mm. hope that the message format never changes. Oh boy, yep. Because I'm sure that the debug messages to standard error are part of a stable interface uh, of um, IF config just because it's the only way to script it. Uh, no, that's just me being a bit uh, flippant about it. But still, I'm. Um, now that I've detected that this happened, I clean it up, destroy the interface, and recreate, and return with an error ah, because okay. the interface name isn't available. So now, though you destroyed it by requesting it, no, uh, I destroyed the temporary interface okay. I've gotten. As it tells me here, uh, 
it wanted to rename tab zero, but tab zero wasn't available. Okay. So instead it had to do this. So now if I go here and tap, tap, tap and destroy that again, the loopback interface I've created and renamed to block the name. The first time it tells me that, yep, this happened. And there are a bunch of other flags again. To basically clone or destroy interfaces, bring them up and down, put them on a bridge because uh, bridges are cloned interfaces as well. You can use uh, something like uh, to get your bridge. And then I can do something like uh, up dash uh, C. Bridge uh, dash. Um, that should give me a uh, a bridge, which now definitely exists, will exist. Well, exist. Yeah. Uh, create a tab interface of that name and put it on there. Let's see if I'm right or if it's. I have config. Yep. That is, it's a member. Your VM too. Uh, is your up and down simply the same as if config up and I down? I have config or do you up do and down just with just handling. So the down basically is accepts if the interface doesn't exist as well. So if it has, ah. has already been destroyed. Okay. And the app um, will tell will just tell you it will it will fail if the interface does not exist. And it will tell you if it already was up, then it doesn't do anything. And if it in the end if it failed to bring it up, it finds out if afterward there is an up interface. But the, whenever it encounters a um error which can basically be undone. It undoes the state which it has to clean up and then finds out if somehow it ended up in the desired state. So basically try it. If it doesn't work, clean up. And if the cleanup failed, it's fatal uh, because something is completely wrong and we would only make it worse by letting the tooling continue. Yeah, but yep, yep. if it could be cleaned up, then it tries if someone else uh, maybe concurrently created the desired state. And that's how uh, it works uh, right now. Um, yeah, so basically all the flags here you can see are implemented. So it can create and destroy interfaces in a way which works for startup scripts in jails or something in a pre-start or created hook so that it can create the interface, but I don't have to basically first destroy the interface. I can reuse it for the, if the jail is restarted, which can be nice because it prevents link state flapping and so on, depending on what kind of interface and if it's visible to anyone but the local system. Jan, do you recall a discussion a year and a half or so ago with Tim Chase, I believe, where I said, hey, the FreeBSD interface check or lack thereof can be really slow at scale. And he banged out a real simple program that simply detects if an interface exists rather than asks for its configuration and other stuff. Would that uh, be useful? You mean here uh, fconfig l uh, That either proved slow, I forget. The, that's you shouldn't... could parse the output, but if you just wanted to check one interface, I recall it being uh, that's... slow. Yeah. Um, right. Can you do ifconfig um, shell on one interface? Yes, I think. Well, let's check. Let's see. Uh, no, but you maybe no only up and down according to the output here. Okay. You so can we, do it on I'll groups. Dig up that code. But uh, that's another annoyance. Let's say yep. I want to list all bridges. Yep. So this is the output from ifconfig dash l. This is the output from dash g bridge. Find the difference. Uh, 
one is space separated, the other new line separated. Oh, charming. Yeah, okay. How what yeah. Yeah. and okay. It, Yeah. Uh, good point. <laughs> yeah. Oh, and the uh, normal IF config output doesn't have a, a, has a new line at the end, and the other one too. But so basically, this normal format and space separated, and then a new line to get a new line. So, yeah. And the other one is only the new line. So yeah, you have that as well. So yeah, it's. It has grown over time. I assume it was useful to have it change your output format for some, the original author's use case, but now it ends with it with scripts like this. Yep. Um, okay, you got to that topic as a shortcoming or opportunity of S6RC. How does this directly relate? Unless it's just um, this relates general, by uh, no no. This isn't a shortcoming of S6RC. It's that I noticed that I was writing very long uh, one shot startup and stop scripts mm -hmm. to create interfaces, and that really the it really had to didn't belong to each copy of the service. Yep. To bring up one interface. And that I was breaking it up because it was getting too long into cloning the interface. Rename, I found out that I couldn't break it up the renaming. So I had to do one for clone and rename if it was renamed, then one for bringing it up, another one for adding it to a bridge, another one for uh, yeah, yep, yep, yep. assigning an IP address to it using NetIF's existing script. And then, yeah, it got longer and longer. And then I found out. Yeah, this really should be a little helper script of its own and not part of a single service definition, but should be factored out to somewhere like libxec. How is this like pre-alpha or how ready would you say this is for your purposes? Um, It's so far because I've only hacked on it last night. It's oh, just the script. <laughs> okay, uh, cool. And yeah, but the idea is to take the... The uh, S6RC stuff I've already done using Ansible and do it uh, a bit simpler in shell because I, this time I won't put in the whole IPv6 stuff and just use bridges so that it's a lot easier to consume and use as a starting point than having to recreate a IPv6 only network with prefix delegation via okay. DHCP v6 and so on. Just basically throwing interfaces into bridges, yeah. And do you have anything else to share, or shall I? Not really. Oh, so okay. you can have the screen back. Oh, good. Oh, you just took it. Okay. <laughs> My job. So yeah, sure. I uh, have taken notes on that as best I can. Group, do you have questions for Jan and perhaps feature request? Heaven forbid we ask him to do more clever things. Would you find these types of tools useful? I personally think there's an opportunity for helpers just to get things right and canonically correct rather than everyone reinventing it over and over and never quite getting it right. Go ahead. Deep pairs are hard to create. Why are they hard to create? Deep net in general is kind of difficult for people to get started on. So yeah, yeah. help is good. I think the problem is that it's such a big step on the learning curve where it's basically discontinuous. You can't learn it in little steps. You have to take a big step at once. And then it's no longer a problem, but it's like getting into electronics or so on, unless you have tools to know and the understanding to debug it, it's just a black box and you have no idea why it doesn't work or even why it does work if you're luckier. I have a point that I would like to raise and Absolutely. admittedly it's kind of a mixed bag because it kind of connects to, uh, to Beehive uh, with the tap interfaces. Please. 
I don't know whether I'm the only person who's ever experienced that, but at least on my system, uh, on my host system for my VMs, I create tabs. I rename those tabs, but I still need to name the tab when I announce it to Beehive in the parameters. And for um, me, it's always, you know, jumping through hoops with that. With which FreeBSD you, version are you using? Yeah, it's 12 point something. Yeah, and I'm, yes, I'm in the process 13. of migrating. So yeah. if you upgrade <laughs> so to 13, maybe it's my um, mistake. I'm sorry. Hold on. Yeah, yeah. Um, upgrade to 13. 13 changes. Yep. Uh, at least 13.2. Uh, and I don't know about which version, but I think 13.0 or newer. The tab driver, once they have been merged into the ton tab driver, uh, creates some links. So if you rename the interface, the driver will create a sim link from the new name to the original device. Or it may even rename the device. I'm not 100% certain about which one released it that. But um, the nice thing is then you can just do read link on the sim link and you get that. And the other part about do, uh, putting it into uh, jails, uh, for example, to uh, update the um, device file system permissions. So to unhide the, only the necessary devices. What I've found is that because it's not really supported to have dynamically generated and especially dynamically allocated uh, de device F as rule sets, what you can do is you create a mount point with a safe rule set which doesn't have the beehive specific devices then you don't apply a new rule set, but you just modify the current mount point. So you make sure that there is no device file system mounted. If there is, you unmount it, then you mount it again with a generic uh, minimal gels rule set. And then you change only the rules on this mount point as it's currently mounted. Then you don't have to allocate a rule set for it. Just do it from your uh, pre-start hook. I would assume that's the optimal one. And you can, because in pre-start, the jail is not yet there. So there's no risk of shenanigans from the jail's uh, super user doing concurrent things like if you unhide too much for a second or so. Um, yeah, because the, the other complication is that Beehive uh, uses a directory in slash dev for Dev VMM, and you also have to unhide the IO uh, one for the emulation of uh, the boot ROM. That, so you have to unhide two devices. And to do that, you basically have to unhide the whole directory, then hide everything under the directory, and then hide, unhide the, uh, sorry, you have to unhide the whole directory, hide everything inside of it, and then uh, unhide just the right name again. Goodness. And the other complication is that the normal uh, DevFS rule set configuration file, because it's passed by the shell, does shell uh, path expansion on the devices, which is uh, another level of quoting you won't have in this case. So really the annoyance of the normal configuration file is gone. You are dealing at that point directly with the DevFS command. So uh, you have to uh, do the expansion if you want it, like it works in the shell. Does yeah, that answer your question? You no longer have to uh, somehow reassociate the interface name with the top driver in div driver uh, unit number, because you can just follow a sum link on recent-ish FreeBSD versions. Chris, does that make some sense? It, it does make some sense. I, I totally understand I need to move to 13. Um, I think that kind of confirms 14. it, uh, not just for the uh, <laughs> 14. <laughs> Give it a day uh, or two. And, um, and I, I, I think the, the interface tool looks looks great. I mean, I, I too have the same. I mean, everyone has this kind of issue with the e-pairs. I mean, come on, VNet, you're... you're <laughs> You're in the same. Um, did you catch uh, the script I shared last week, MKE pair? 
I think I saw that, yes. Should be in the notes there. Do a search on ePair. And while you look that up and Jan, you polish those up and we thank you for it. Uh, Dan, you have an update on your FS tab crafting? Yes. Artisanal FS tabs, yes. Let's see here. Where are... The opposite, auto-generated ones. I hope yeah. so, at least. <laughs> what I did, Jan, is I it disabled the jail Let him finish. I disabled the jail, rebooted, and then uh, started the jail. It didn't mount what I wanted, so I copy and pasted the mount command to run it manually. And I don't know why it gives that syntax error. Uh, which... Uh, wait a second. Um, wait a second. I think the syntax error happens because uh, you're not quoting it. You have to barely quote the whole uh, dash C argument. Okay. What dash C isn't special, so it's only it's still just the argument to one command. And if you want to pipe it into the shell. Like that, you may want to use dash s and just copy and paste it to send it in, or write it into a shell script and run it. Let me just try it again over here. Uh, but dash, here. what happens if you invoke it like this is that dash f will be pa passed as argument to bin sh, and not as part of I the understand. argument to dash c. I understand. So what I did is I put a double quote at mount and a double quote at EOF. Yes. And ran it there. And mount still doesn't like what I'm doing. Oh, wait. No, I did it wrong. And you why do you and put, put it in an X for shell? Just run the mount dash uh, F as the def, uh, as to the in and AF and copy and paste VFS top in to stand it in. It will show you. Uh, I got, got it to run without error, and now I just want to see if it's mounted that stuff. It looks like you are fighting the double no. uh, more quoting, unquoting, and expansion inherent in running all of this through so, multiple levels of paras with variable replacement and so on, which is a pain. Yeah, and but, running the command, running the mount on the command line with double quotes gives no errors, but also doesn't give me any files. So I'm gonna um, have to did you copy and paste the FS tab into standard in? So just I'll put the FS tab into a file and give the file name as, as a dash uppercase F. Yeah. It's really just, just the path to the uh, FS tab to mount. Yeah. I'm doing the, the paste to stamp from standard in this time and the control D and it doesn't give me any errors and there's no files. Control okay, D I'll just... In... Yep. I'll, I'll put yep. it into a file now. If it runs with a dash AV, it should give you that. If the file systems aren't already mounted, it should give you a quite verbose list of things it does. It gave me no output whatsoever. I can share my and screen. Then it, you should do that. Maybe it's, it's probably a simple little thing which uh, trips you up because it's just this little typo here or something. I'll just sounds more like a syntax screen, problem than anything else. I think if I share my whole screen, it may be too small, maybe too big, because this is a very big screen. And maybe but more than you want to share. No, no there's nothing on Let this screen. Put on a... It's tiny. <laughs> yeah. Either uh, increase the font size, uh, or yeah. it will be yeah. unreadable in the recording. Please oh. give me a little bit. You share. You're sharing your whole he's, screen he's right now. He's getting there. He's getting there. He knows. And, and I know what's on it. And it's just dev stuff. Yep. Okay. So, uh, so feel free to zoom so in further just, and just make that huge. Can you read this now? I can read it because I put you on full screen on a 4K yeah. screen, but the recording will be at most in full HD. So that's what 
Yeah, bump it up a few more if you could. That would be, or just let yeah, me go. see if I just, that one. just share the one. App. Yeah, that's probably best. <clears throat> On a Mac, that's possible with the desktop app, and then Chromium as well. Yeah, has that. Beautiful. That's that now. Yeah. Okay. A lot easier for any potential. Can you see my cursor? Uh, yes, yes, we see your mouse cursor. Okay. We see anything you so do inside the window. Here. I tried here. Yep. And you copy and, and paste it in. Uh, can you do a mount dash p pipe grab uh, what one of them by the jails per cooler SD dash four or something? So when we find out what is already mounted, I'd maybe pipe it through so, co column dash T to make it uh, human friendly. Alt dash T? Column dot dash T. Not just call, column. That's a nice app. I didn't know about them. Yeah, it, so it's a. Uh, it is mounted. Yeah, but no, you can uh, see here that if you now take this mounted. here, is the jail running? Yeah, no, it's not running. Okay, so uh, you can take the output from the column and uh, put it into uh, the output from column. Yeah. It's still no no just the hold, bring back the command line by just up arrow until it's there or dash R control R mm -hmm. and then we can uh, use um, another pipe and U mount dash F uppercase. Uh, slash def std in. Uh, dash a dash v dash lowercase f to force the unmount. Now that's not going to wind up you mounting this. Uh, wait. This uh, is it. Uh, what that, that, those would mount be all of that. You that's the problem. That. Don't do it. Which is why. I didn't no, it'll be anything. okay. You mentioned that. Okay. Uh, you can put it in there. Just maybe. How about requiring another slash afterward? Uh, a cooler is the uh, four slash. If you don't want to unmount the in the grab, if you put a slash after the existing rack X, it will no longer match the first line. It'll be okay this way. So this should tell you uh, quite the both the uh, the unmount as it unmounts them. The column is un is not needed at that point, but it doesn't hurt. Yep. So it told That's us that it good. unmounted it all. Yep. So and did you mount all? Good. Yeah, dash p is quite useful uh, because it prints the current st system state at least most of it. It may lose some arguments, let, let's say, to um, mounts with mount helper commands and so on, but enough for mounting and unmounting uh, of the system state, just as an FS tab, which is easy to filter with bin SH. While mount and DF and other tools have libxo support, if you can already get the format, the mount and unmount commands want, there's no need to go through uh, JSON as an intermediate format. Okay. So, so now you have unmounted them. And yes. if you take this little, um, so now if you take the jail command. Just let's have a look. Yep. That should give nothing. Yeah, that's consistent. Sorry, what were you suggesting we try now? Uh, now to um, mount, mount them again. Because the, if they are, have already been mounted, of course, mount uh, dash AV won't tell you that it changed anything because uh, uh, it does not fail like other commands. It works as expected. 
Um, because auto mounting shouldn't fail if the file system, uh, there's a center, yeah, typo STD in, not sure. STD ins. And now you can uh, write the P that, uh, no, no, without a P, uh, P is to dump the counts that I don't know how those flags interact with dash A. Um, no uh, dash P? So this uh, instructs mount to read an FS tab from uh, standard in, so UTDY, mm -hmm. uh, and will be verbose about everything it did. Wow. Yeah, which, uh, and now you just press control D to end the stream. Yep, and it worked. There's the data. So. Uh, you have some kind of quoting problem in your uh, Jared Conf. Let's have a look. Yeah, that, if those are tops that, Oh, um, I would, so let's have a look. Uh, to, to, to move in, can you uh, shift the EOF one tap to the left? Okay, so now it definitely has one tap less than the content. I'm not 100% certain if that's necessary, but uh, we, no, no, don't, you know, that's just ugly and definitely not necessary. <laughs> that's why we, we use the this type oh, of man. dog, okay. Uh, now, if you unmount them again, and Nice, so you already simplified it to a dumb little persistent jail with nothing uh, causing any problems. And you also wrote the console okay. log to a file, which is also a good idea. Now let's try that find again. Should be nothing. There's nothing in there. Now if I do... If you know, oh, is wait. the data set delegated to the jail or not? No, it's okay. not jailed. Okay, that's good because then, uh, so now you can run no, jail dash v dash c uh, the jail dot conf. Oh, I had that there. Okay. Uh, you're missing the space that. after the dash uh, before the dash v. And the jail.conf with dash f. And I don't know if the jail name is an argument to dash c or not. I'm not 100% certain about that part of the syntax. Uh, it's if the not. dash c has to go last or not uh, no. before the jail name and after the configuration, but uh, apparently not. Okay. So what happened here? Uh, it looked like uh, there's output from mount, uh, so it ran. Yep. Now I have jails. Now I have data in there. Yep. Can you now uh, stop the jail? So which should unmount them? This jail minus our bacula. Uh, yeah, I think you have to give it the configuration file as well to do the right thing, because otherwise it won't know uh, about the hooks, I think. At least I wouldn't know from where it should take them. This is only required if you use the non-default one, as you had to in 13. Look at that. So yeah, now if you uh, go into the jail.conf. Mm -hmm. And just to make sure if that changes something. Uh, so what we did is we moved the EOF. Uh, if you uh, just indented one tab more, does that cause a problem? Or maybe a uh, space uh, snuck in there. I'm not familiar with Joe as an editor. How easy that could happen. It'll be a tab. We'll go back and check. 
Yeah, if you can. But the... Yep, those are tabs. Yep. If you can you open it in uh, Vim in list mode? So open it in Vim and uh, use uh, set list on as a command which would then make tabs visible. Try VI. Uh, yeah, I don't know if basis in VI has set list. It does and dash and set no list undoes it which makes new lines and uh, tabs visible and looks like you've used them correctly everywhere. For normally the jail.conf syntax doesn't care, but the shell does mm -hmm. <laughs> because jail.conf just passes it through. It becomes sensitive to tabs because the shell is you use here docs. And there's the jail stuff again. So, so it still worked. Even with the expert help. So files are there. After restarting the jail, yeah, it the should files work are... with if the EOF is on the last line. Uh, it's just, mm. okay, now, this I don't know what you changed. Do you have uh, a snap earlier snapshot of this configuration file? Uh, I have. I do. I'm sure I Especially do. Especially just the ZFS snapshot of a few hours ago or something on the file. Yep. So, uh, so that we could see. run diff on it. Uh, you have to enter a specific snapshot. Yep. Now let's go to yeah, this should be old enough. Now the problem here is the files aren't the same yet because but if you well, uh, do a vi dash uppercase r so that it doesn't complain. Yep. We need something to compare. Yep. As if if they're no, similar enough. The things are in different files. Yeah. So you I know. get that. This is below one is the one, and then. Oh. Now we got something to compare. Uh, diff minus R U N. Let's see. Jail dot com. And slash at C jail dot com. So yeah, that that's the difference. Is I've changed tabs. I've changed the tabs when there were spaces. That's yeah, the difference. That's, uh, yeah, that but, will, uh, that explains but, why before you. Hmm? Got but the issue is, is that I changed them to tabs and then rebooted. And it didn't bring, it didn't succeed. I'm going to try yeah, to Now the again. interesting question is, can you run uh, RC order on slash etc rc.d star? That uh, should ETC order them. RC.d and then star as wildcard. That sorts them. You know, uh, you have to give that uh, the full path. There's basically all the rc.d scripts, then it sorts them in the order it will start them. Use this now we look for ZFS and find out if it's for some reason too early. A ZFS is there and J should be, be after that. Just barely and There's use grab dash uppercase E so ZFS is there and there is the jail almost to the end. So that's fine. So the ZFS yeah. uh, file systems will all have been mounted. You didn't have some little script. Introduce a right. destructive dependency which pulled the jail command to early or something. Well, if nothing else, I'll try another reboot, but that will take a while. 
And yeah, if you reboot back. and uh, you does the current jail.conf save the output to a file? Uh. And you could also try to redirect standard error to standard out if standard error is preserved or to just re redirect it always to a file or just redirect it into standard out and pipe it into logger so that you can uh, read it afterward because the, unless you're attached to a console normally, the rc.d script doesn't preserve the uh, there's nothing console in output from running with jail configuration stuff. So you will only get a list of jails, not file. all their output. Yeah, and there's yeah. nothing in this file. I looked in this file, there's nothing related to the map problem. So right now you're using a single global jail.conf file for everything? No, I'm using this. Oh, yes, jail.com for everything at the moment. Yeah. Uh, do you still have files in etc jail.d, jail.conf.d? I do. I do. Uh, etc jail.conf.d, the other, let Antronik uh, explain to you why that's a problem. <laughs> oh, no, they're not named dot .conf. So I'm just going to restart this host and see what happens. Yeah. So I would uh, also recommend moving this jail.conf dot d directory array, just move it to slash root or somewhere where it doesn't hurt. Uh, if you want to use a single, because this uh, this directory or having etc jail dot jail name dot conf triggered special behavior in the FreeBSD 13.1 and 2, I think, rc dot d scripts for jail to rudiment uh, the uh, this is all we have, so yeah, that's I think fine. we're okay. We're okay. And we can see oh, all you the already have a jail.conf.d ignored. Okay. <laughs> I just moved it. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. And we also have a before FS tablet. So yeah, that, do you have access to the system console during boot? I do have a system console. It's right over here. <laughs> Mm -hmm. You should have IDRAC. Yeah, that's what I mean. I do have IDRAC. Excellent. Just to have a look at it, did you configure the uh, IDRAC is quite nice because uh, they have uh, a fast uh, SSH to serial bridge in there. So you can just SSH to the IDRAC, run, uh, execute, uh, connect this H via SSH. So type that in and you get a fast, uh, reliable serial connection to the host without all of the IDRAC crap. If, and then you can just configure your FreeBSD systems to use uh, the uh, serial over LAN interface as system console, and you never have to deal with that video capture again. Could be worse. Yeah, it could be a lot better as well. Uh, Especially on the older ones, it's just. Yes, sir. Other topics while that system reboots somewhere on the East Coast, assuming it's nearby. <laughs> oh, yes, lifecycle controller drivers. Yep, give it a few Don't minutes. Don't you dare there. buy your silicon from anyone but Dell branded firmware vendors. Yeah. Uh, I've had I more trouble like, on HPE. But like any that. vendor is doing it differently. Yeah. Mm. I do like yeah, iDrive. Yeah. It, it's much better than the super micro stuff I'm used to. Uh, and the I 740? I've experiences with iDrive. Yeah, I'm of course. Kind of they're all terrible. But... That super micro doesn't believe it's that they're better. saving the world with better firmware. Better. Just get out of your way. But yeah, it has gotten better though. Right on the seven forty, you can choose the next boot right at the start and walk, walk away and get coffee, which is nice. Um, jail topics. Oh, what do we have? Uh, we have an I/O error. Uh, the not the a loader one? throws all kinds of noise like that. Uh -huh. It's getting weirder and weirder. Yeah, uh, if, if it gets confused with the device uh, numbering. Uh, jail topics. 
Yeah, one for Jamie. Yeah. Mostly. Uh, <laughs> how much work would it be to basically have a mode where the an entry point into the jail command to tell it the jail has already been reaped by the kernel because it was a non persistent jail? Now please run the uh, configured uh, destructors like post, stop, uh, and release hooks. The uh... And the tricky part about that is the destructors are just like the constructors in that they run in order and they uh, make sure that errors do not propagate by one of them failing stops but, the order. And in this yeah. case, you right expect finish. many of them to fail. So that's a very different shutdown sequence. Uh, no, you don't expect them to fail. I would have expect you might expect to... some of them to fail. I mean, maybe an interface didn't go down, but a file system did get unmounted, um, or vice versa. I would have expect you... them to only run the post stop and release exec hooks, and them to be written to work in both cases, basically. Uh, normal okay, if you're only and... expecting it to run those hooks, then I would suggest that you put the same code that's in those hooks into the pre-create hooks in the appropriate places. But then it would recreate the jail. That's not what I want. I want it to basically to clean up so that DevD can be used uh, to uh, have the jail command do cleanup after reaped non-persistent jails. Now oh, okay. So I see. DevD uh, gets a notification if you have the right kernel module loaded that uh, this jail has been destroyed. And then I just wanted to basically run the jail command again, but in such a way that it only does uh, uh, the cleanup steps, those time has not yet passed. So the cleanup steps that would have been run after the jail remove call if it was a persistent jail. Yes, so you can no longer do a pre-stop or stop because that's passed. You missed the chance to run that. And especially you can't run stop anymore uh, because stop uh, runs inside the jail, which has already been destroyed. Right. Okay. I, I see what you're getting at. I mean, yeah, that, so that's that doable. That would just be basically starting the... Uh remove process yeah, midstream. Um, exactly. Yeah, that seems doable. Could you uh, send me an email on that so I can kind of get it on a to-do list that just way? Just to your freebsd.org address? Yeah. Yeah, I will just uh, sketch it out because it's it should be at least, I don't see why it should be any harder than just building up the shutdown list and then basically skipping everything before that. You yeah. could say a missed opportunity to do something if it's configured, and then you do the steps which are still relevant. And those could be used to unmount file systems and stuff like this. Yeah, that's just something which would be nice because uh, it would be an improvement over losing all state and not ha having a entry point to recover what state is still available to basically use. Yeah, and check the minutes. I've tried to capture that accurately, yeah. especially the first sentence. So I, I did not, doesn't, I do not expect the jail command to suddenly be able to uh, time travel back to before the jail destruction and run the stop and uh, pre even pre stop uh, hooks because that's yeah. The thing I don't know and couldn't figure out quickly is how that interacts with jail.com file system mounting, which and unmounting. Speaking of uh, which, you were working on state tracking. How's that coming? <laughs> uh, yeah, um, they still have 24 hours, I'm afraid. I know, I know. Uh, um, Dan, we see your console. Do you have a jail-friendly show up and running? Yep. Maybe share that out. 
Is that a you don't have to suffer right through here. the laggy console. Searching through the list to see where it is. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's not that one. Oh, it's this one. So, Jan, you gave yourself an action item to explain that clearly to Jamie by email, and I've documented as best I could in the minutes. Yes, we see your console. Back your uh, after rebooting, it's not there, and I don't know. I'm not okay, sure uh, but in the file where it should have preserved the logs? Yep. Both uh, Valor sure. messages and the wasn't it var run or something? Var console uh, um, jail or something? No. No, that's not the var temp, I think you put it. Var temp. Yeah, var temp jail dot jail name. So that's look. September 7th, so. And I'll go to the end. And we should. That's today. And that's today. Yeah. So don't have not putting time anything conversion, up. but that doesn't. It looks like it was, no, that's. No, that was a few minutes ago. Yep. It put the time zone conversion correctly. Mm -hmm. so, yeah, first... it's 1924 right now. Yep. Okay. So, so I'll keep playing around with this and see what I can find. And if you now, now do a jail dash C uh, again, it will tell you that the jail exists, right? Uh, yep. Right there. And if you stop it and start it, it works. Oh, I have an idea what could also be part of the problem. What's the uh, path? Is, do you have an empty uh, path in the script so that it wouldn't know where to find commands from outside uh, slash bin and bin oh. sh or something? So well, remember do you have that, to... um, Remember that if I... If I stop, if I restart the jail now, it will be mounted properly. Yeah, of course. Uh, what I'm uh, thinking about is if it, uh, during the auto start, if it lacks uh, the shell uh, dollar uppercase path to uh, locate commands like mount. Oh. But that would be, hmm. it's just another. Grasping at Swarth's idea because uh, it's so annoying to debug such a thing which only happens during boot. Uh, what that would is is it Aspen or is it yeah it has to be Aspen not bug right which mount yep yeah, you're right. And uh, now then it should definitely find it if it, the path is empty, I think, but I'm not 100% certain. Even if it is empty at this point, or it should just be a, the usual base system command paths like uh, as bin bin, user as bin bin. Uh, now the file system will probably be there, right? Yeah, they're there. No, uh, if you have another five minutes, you can reboot and find out if that changed something. Uh, session time, I mean, no, it's in. But yeah, um, those kind of things are a bit annoying. Something I could share is the code. Uh, I use right now to do the uh, mount -p filtering. Uh, just 
so that I can do it for yes. NSH without calling out to any commands, just using shell built-ins. Michael, the stuff that we're doing now, is this relevant enough for recording or is this getting into too personal? We are definitely on the cusp of that, but uh, Antrenig found that people were quite happy to watch his Discord hacking session. Same with um, uh, that, Steve Wills. And so we're definitely on the cusp of that because we have folks like Jamie and Chris and all. But uh, that said, are we this close? Because, hey, if you've got it working, uh, Jan, you have users and they are very informed users. And that's a good thing. This morning, I was sitting at a cafe in the sun waiting for time to go to work. And so I was working on my laptop and all I was doing was upgrading FreeBSD infrastructure and saying, would people be interested enough to watch and see how this happens? And I was thinking, yes, I'd definitely do that on a Friday night or something. But no, I'd probably be busy with something else on a Friday night. So, so there is a time and place for all of that. Um, I find it timely that we are pushing Jan's file system layout to its limits. And if we find a bug related to that, this that is, allows everyone to keep moving forward. This is different from, it's, it? it's just a different way to do the mounting, which this does not look like the full file system layout I came up with for templating jails art. Perhaps using it's a step stateless uh, base system package sets and then stateful, persistent mm -hmm. in the Linux container container terminology volumes, but the persistent VFS data sets for the jail to keep its state in. Yes, sir. Okay. I haven't seen that in his uh, jail.conf because uh, that's a few hundred lines of bash, which, right. uh, or not bash, bin SH. Um, Can you ping it? How's that reboot? It's coming. See? Cool. Other ideas, topics, questions, fun stories. Um, okay. The Asia BSD Con call for participation is apparently open, and I've been oblivious to that. So just saying for those who celebrate. So this uh, should then I will link to this a little snippet because it may be useful to you. Okay, I'll get a copy of that. In chat or where? In chat, yes, uh, to, get... to, an, uh, to GitHub. Um, so what I do here is basically in my whole let's jail dot, let jail.conf become a twisted kind of jail manager. Uh, hmm. What I'm doing is I mark all jail file systems as not auto-mounted. So that they're not mounted before the uh, jail.conf is executed. And then if there's still anything there, it must be from a failed previous execution. So basically the base unmount um, function is the interesting part to a starting point. It finds everything under the jail mount point. Uh, so on a dollar path. No, didn't this is matter. part of the larger shell script. Uh, yeah. By basically setting the input field separator to the new line in line 20, mm -hmm. uh, then emptying out the shell argument vector to the current function and disabling a path expansion with set a dash f dash dash. And then it runs four line in. Um, mount dash uh, p, and then because the IFS is set to uh, split only on lines, and no further path expansion happens, and verbal expansion like this is after command ex expansion, so no risk of that happening again. Okay, so basically the for loop loops over all lines in mount dash p's output. Uh, yeah. If um, it would collapse multiple empty lines consecutive into a single, but that's not a problem for the output from it here. So it preserves the output perfectly. Then because I'm, uh, let, 
using the only array I have in a bin sh script, um, which is the argument vector, I kind of have to do it in a function to check if the current line uh, is mounted underneath um, the jail root path, which is this um, base is beneath function. Uh, uh, this is just try, uh, checks if the mount point is exactly the jail uh, mount point or is the jail mount point a slash and then anything. Uh, I can't, mm -hmm. it's not enough to check if it starts with that because you can, could have a jail mounted into slash jails foo and the other one into slash jails foo bar. And if you didn't make sure that you had to have the slash after the path uh, that uh, would have a false positive and could have uh, catastrophic consequences. So it's important that you only do sub directories and not just any path with the same prefix. Uh, which is what the helper function up there does. And if that one matches, I uh, use set with the special uh, dollar add variable to um, preserve the existing argument list and append this current line. So basically I'm collecting all lines which of file systems which are mounted underneath uh, the jail path. And if Afterward, my argument list is non-empty. I uh, use uh, a here doc with dollar star in it to have all the lines, all the arguments joined by the first character in IFS, which is the only one new line. So basically I recreate a filtered version and all of this is done without calling out to org or grab. Uh, which is useful because starting those uh, relative to uh, parsing a few hundred or thousand bytes of text is just wasteful and introduces another level of potential quoting fuck ups. So yeah, by doing it like this for, for the expected length of the mount output, it's probably faster to do this in shell than to do it by piping out to org. And it also avoids another level of things where you can have quoting uh, problems with jail.conf and so on. And the other thing I found is that it's the lesser evil to just use a minimal um, uh, exec hook and then basically use the dot built in, in the shell to source a shell script into the hook. And we tell the shell script by defining a variable which hook is currently running and then source from a file because you get rid of this extra layer of jail.conf uh, quoting. And then you can use the uh, shell uh, exit pseudo signal to do proper cleanup from the shell script if something happens to it. So you uh, instead of uh, having to build it up from single commands without any state, if you have to do multi-step things like create an, an mm -hmm. ePair interface, we name the ePair interface. The only way you can do that with a single, by chaining single commands from the main system together is by hard wiring the ePair index uh, you're creating. Maybe use the, for example, to use the jail ID there hardwired or some other small integer you've manually assigned. And then again, if anything else uses ePairs other than your single one to jail.com, suddenly it fails because the index is blocked. Yeah, that's just annoying. But if okay. you have a shell script, it can, and the MKE pair script uh, I linked earlier in chat, uh, does all of this for you. So maybe look at that if you need EPS. Great, for the win, how's yeah. that reboot? Didn't work. Didn't work. Uh, do you two so, want to connect offline in some regard? Yeah, yeah let's do I'll that. Stop the recording. I've pasted a link to the Asia BSD con call for participation. It closes the 27th.
And unless you have something other pressing, I say we call it. And uh, I guess I can leave this open until oh, an, just over an hour when ZFS starts. Be well, fun. Chris, Jamie, do you have any topics? No. Cool. Catch you on another nope. call. Thank you, everyone. And you know where to find me if you need me. Yep. Thank you. Have a good one.